The liberals to write off the West is invoking an American style culture war pitting urban against rural, tolerance versus racism and homophobia, really the road to electoral success in Canada. According to Frank Graves, he was just here, he was quoted today by the columnist Lawrence Martin in The Globe, a full-blown culture war is a winning play. Is it really? To find out, Frank Graves is still here. I'm joined by Corey Tonight, CBC contributor and former director of communications for Stephen Harper. Uh, Frank, those are tough words, and I just want to read some of these things. I mean, just so our, our viewers, uh, apparently you told uh, Lawrence Martin, I told them, the liberals, that they should invoke a culture war, cosmopolitanism versus parochialism, secularism versus moralism, Obama versus Palin, democracy versus autocracy. If the cranky old men in Alberta don't like it, too bad. Go south and vote for Palin. Frank, you're drinking strong coffee. Do you really think a culture war is the way to go? Um, well, this, is, remember, is sort of more strategic advice rather than polling analysis. So I'm not operating here in the, um, under the mantle of pollster. I'm, I was asked to say what would be some advice for the liberals who seem to be stuck in the mud. And frankly, I, the more I've looked at it, and actually the thinking about this was precipitated by some work that was done by Alan Gregg and Manning, talking about how the country had, uh, had moved to the right, was bluing. And so I'd been doing some follow-up working on that. And the more I looked at it, I thought, you know what? For, a, for a, uh, an opposition that doesn't seem to be getting much traction on policy issues or other things, perhaps questioning this issue of what constitute the core values and the central values of Canadians and how they're drifting is something which might be more f uh, fruitful ground. The, the, that's a rather distilled summary, right. which is perhaps a little florid in the yeah, language. Well, it was like, I, would, I guess it may just quickly before I get to Corey, it said in the article, this is advice you gave the Liberal Party. Raising the question, is Frank Graves, and that has implications here for all of us. Yeah. Are you paid by the Liberal Party to give advice, or are you paid by the Liberal Party to poll? No, I, I have no relationship with the Liberal Party, either official. I'm not on an org chart. I'm not on a payroll, and I never have been. In fact, I don't do any paid political work for any party, never have. I do provide advice more than I'm asked to any number of political parties, including, in fact, conservative parties in the past. They're not calling a lot lately. But I have, in fact, uh, this is an occupational frailty for the, the pollster. They feel compelled when asked to provide that kind of thing. So I do want to make a distinction that when I make my analysis as a media pollster, I try to be scrupulously fair. I look at the data, and I just try and give my balanced sense of what's going on, what it means. Corey? Well, I, I, first of all, I, it probably doesn't need any explanation to the viewers, but viewers, I am a conservative. Uh, I used to be a spokesman for Prime Minister Harper. I give money to the Conservative Party. I work on their election campaigns. I'm a conservative. And so what I'm going to say to you today and what I say to you almost every day, you know, it, it's my professional opinion of politics, but it's also coming from a conservative and apply whatever filter you want. Now, Frank, you say you don't work for the Liberal Party and that you're not in a professional relationship with them, but would you describe yourself personally as a liberal? Um, I'm probably a center, small L liberal. Maybe a progressive would be more accurate. But uh, I've never been a member of the party, and I've never been on the payroll. Well, how so I think affect, that's not, How does that affect the well, work? But, how but, does that affect the, the, the polling that ECOS does? Well, I think it affects in terms of the analysis and advice that you're, you're providing. Uh, Frank, unless you disagree with this, since 2001, you've given $11,000 to the Liberals, and you've given $0 to the Conservatives, the Reform Party, or the Canadian uh, Alliance. Uh, actually, so, actually that's, si that's simply not true. But, you should check. No, sorry, not true. So, I, get, I have given several hundred dollars to the Conservative Party. No, no, stop, because you raised the point. I found a candidate that I really liked. I gave him $500 in the last election. Okay. A conservative candidate. Okay, so let's so, get the facts. So, okay, so but, you've but, given $500 okay, but, versus 11000 Corey, but, just no, no, but take let's it get to the, the facts. Big, I take it well, to the big picture. Are I'll, you I'll questioning the, I'll the validity the big, of those numbers? I'll take it to the big picture in this way, that I think what's offensive about this to most Canadians, Western Canadians, people in rural Canada, is the, the notion that the country should be divided with them on the outside, and if you don't like it, move to the United States and vote for Sarah Palin. I think that's offensive to a lot of Canadians. Now, I think it's interesting uh, if that is advice from a liberal, you know, and you, I'll, I'll take your word for it, you've given 500 bucks to a conservative, uh, you've given a lot more than that, like 11,000 to the liberals in the last wrong, 10 years. But, but is and your that problem, is, well, let me, let me get the strategy, let me the get advice to, that's offensive? Let me get to, or let the, me get to the point. If you're, if you're Michael Ignatieff, if you're the liberal party, this is, uh, this is an advice from a liberal to the liberals, 
Okay, so this is what it is, and I actually think it's a strategy that they're following. If you look at what the Liberals have framed on the gun control bill just this week, for instance, uh, where they're, they're really taking a position that is very offensive to people in rural Canada and Western Canada, and basically saying, even to members of their own caucus, uh, go stick it. I, I think it is not just advice from, uh, from a Liberal. I'm a Conservative. You're a Liberal. That's fine, no, but look, it is. But there's okay. a difference. Let, let I'm, not, I'm not a member of the professional team, never have been. And there's lots of citizens out there that have views that are both small L liberals and small C conservatives. And I think I'm entitled to, you know, when asked to uh, what my opinion would be effective strategy, to make it. I haven't presented this to so, any, to so, Michael Ignatieff or the liberals. You know, in fact, part of the, the point of talking to guys like Lawrence Martin is to put this out to shape a debate. A debate, by the way, which was initiated by the Manning Institute who said that in fact what was defining the center of the country now were conservative and socially conservative values. I've been doing very careful research, very neutral, tracking this through time, and I find that to not be the case. So I think a debate about values and where we're going is at okay, the very well, heart of what we should well, be well, discussing. Let's look, look but at, let's make sure we get the evidence but, in place. But, but let's look at what your actual words are. When you say cosmopolitanism versus parochialism, secularism versus moralism, Obama versus Palin, tolerance versus racism, and homophobia, democracy versus autocracy, Stephen Har Harper's an autocrat? Yeah. Uh, that, that he's a homophobe, that he's a racist? No, is that, that what, you know, is that so, what, so no, Frank, I didn't, so you're talking Frank, about a wedge. I never said that, that's and, not what I said. Well, so, so Frank, explain that, because they are very provocative words, but explain exactly then, then in terms the point of, of them. In terms of crafting a political strategy, which is different from interpreting the numbers, I believe one of the problems that the opposition parties suffer from is that they don't have the same sense of, of moral conviction, the same sort, sense of emotional attachment to their positions as the other as as the conservatives do the level of commitment across the conservatives in terms of enthusiasm for the positions is dramatically strong they really do feel very comfortable with these positions so far the values that they have been presenting largely are not congruent with the values of the rest of the spectrum but they don't have a sense of emotional attachment to those values and so i think one of the more success and face it elections are won and lost not on rational issues but on emotional engagement. So, so, Corey, so this, this is, is just sort this of This is a highly, trip. highly divisive stuff. I think a lot of people in Western Canada and rural Canada r read this and they say, Frank Graves is giving me the middle finger and he is actually suggesting that the Liberal Party do that. It's highly divisive, it's highly offensive to a lot of Conservatives, a lot of people in rural Canada, a lot of Westerners. And and I I just think it's but, it's shocking advice. <laughs> I do. I think well, it's shocking it wasn't, advice. It wasn't I'm a, shocked you said it. It, it, it. I think it's time to have an explicit debate about what country, what, what values are yeah, defined yeah, in the country. Is it, is it Obama versus Palin? I don't think either of them are running here. Is it tolerance no, versus the racism and homophobia? Are symbols that tolerance, I think people can understand. Tolerance versus, so the Liberals are tolerant, versus racism and homophobia. Well, I guess that must be the well, concern. I mean, again, we're trying to present these in terms that they'll present some emotional resonance with voters and depict, obviously, no, I don't think yeah, well, liberals I are think pedophiles either. Look, but I, that's, I, been, that's, I, been, that's I, been raised by I, in the I, past. I think that, uh, I think that you're going to get a reaction uh, to that. Right. I think it'll I'm, be emotionally gonna, divisive, I'm, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna, I don't think it's okay, going to be good guys, for you. I, I'm going to interrupt on a last thing. The question is, you know, often political strategy is controversial. Uh, look at, and no, strategy isn't meant to bring people together. It's meant to win elections. I understand that. The question here, and a last question, does that affect in any way, shape, or form the data? When we learn about the country, Frank Sapolsky, you can have opinions uh, as a strategist, but I guess my question to you is, is the numbers stand Full. objectively or, or the strategy? Look, look there, there's numbers, but you don't, you, it, it, coming on television and talking about polling isn't just about, an, uh, about numbers. You're providing analysis. I come on and provide analysis, sometimes okay. critical of the conservatives, sometimes supportive, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm a conservative. And that affects right. the, the commentary and analysis I give. So those, those small words in journalism, for the sake, in the interests of full disclosure, you say, well, I am Corey Tonight, I am a conservative. Okay. And I hope let, that Frank let, will come on and say, let, I'm Frank Graves, I said, I'm a liberal. I already said what my beliefs are, but I also made it very clear that I'm not a member of the Liberal Party, never have been, I've never been on a payroll, I've never worked you, on the Hill. just give no, them sorry, thousands these are not, and thousands of dollars. These are non-trivial differences. These are non-trivial differences. And by the way, I defy you to find examples of my analysis on this show or in my written submissions okay. to CBC that indicate but, bias. But the viewers I can make up their own mind. The viewers uh, just, can make okay, up their own I mind. Want to just say